Hello gang, Craig Ripley here. Welcome once again to Living Off the Slab. Today we're going to continue our discussion on motorcycle touring clothing and again we're going to focus a little bit on the new rider or the new touring rider and give them some tips on what they might want to do to kind of avoid some of the mistakes we old guys have made over the now, years. Before I get going, one thing I have to do is to do a little retraction or at least tell you about a mistake I may have made. Last video I mentioned that uh, a discount was available if you purchase through Twisted Throttle by linking from my website. And I did that because when I had purchased through my non-affiliate account and bought some stuff on another affiliate site, I was given a 10% discount. Well, turns out that there may have been some glitch in the twisted throttle system so I am researching that right now to see what the deal is and see if we can pass that discount on to you I was pretty excited because I thought that uh, that would be great for all of my viewers here but for right now hold tight and uh, I'll be back to you as soon as I find out what's really going on there Thanks for being understanding. Continuing our discussion on motorcycle touring clothing, this time we want to talk about jackets. Now my first bike when I returned to motorcycling was a Kawasaki Vulcan 900 LT. All right, and that's the little touring model, a 900 cc cruiser with a windshield and some leather saddlebags. So that was what I started touring on and I went out and got myself and what I thought was some pretty nice touring gear. And that was a jacket similar to this one. This is the Tourmaster Air Intake 3. I started off with an Air Intake 2, but uh, then it was eventually replaced with this jacket. Now the reason I went with this style of jacket is because I thought it was going to be very versatile, right? I'd have a, a full mesh jacket for riding in the summer, plus I'd have rain liner like this, obviously when it rained, and then I'd have the insulated layer that I could throw in as well. And you know, it really was. It was really very versatile. There were some issues that, again, over time I discovered and found out about. So really, the biggest issue that I found and why I ended up switching to another jacket is because, well, this internal rain liner. All right, I mean, it sounds good and it does the job. It does keep you dry, at least up to a point. A real soaking rain, well, it's not 100% rain proof, right? It's more rain resistant. And also, this mesh fabric that is in this jacket, well, it gets wet itself and it soaks up the water. So what I was finding is that in a real soaking rain, as I mentioned, the jacket gets really heavy and then it doesn't dry out very quickly. I was hanging it up at night, you know, to dry out in my hotel rooms, even using the hair dryer on it, and it would still be a little bit damp the next morning if I had a real heavy rain. So that just wasn't wasn't working very well for me. So I ended up having to carry rain gear anyway, right, to cover this jacket and kind of just use this as a wind liner, basically. So along with that little issue about the rain, which is really a big issue for me, right, I end up having to carry the both of the liners that go inside this jacket, right? And they come in a bag about that big when I squish them all down. Also, I had to carry a full set of rain gear. Again, jacket and pants, again, that's about that big. So altogether, that's a lot of stuff, a lot of room in the saddlebags that I've got to take up in order to wear this jacket. And if my wife is going with me and she has a jacket that's similar, well, now I've got four of these bags, again, taking up a lot of room in the saddlebags. So after years of going through that, carrying all that stuff with me, and then also sitting on the side of the road and fighting to get rain gear on whenever the skies look threatening, I decided it was time to do something about it. So that's when I started looking into jackets like the climb latitude here that were going to keep me dry if it rained and also give me enough ventilation that I could stay cool while I'm riding and would allow me to eliminate carrying all of those liners and things with me. As I mentioned in my previous video, the climb jacket is what is called a technical shell. And that is it's an outer Cordura layer with a Gore-Tex inner lining inside here that's fused with that Cordura layer and it makes a 100% waterproof but still somewhat breathable layer. If 
the jacket leaks, it is guaranteed for life and they will replace it. Also, being that I do most of my touring in the summer, it was important to me that the jacket has good ventilation. And the climb, it does that very well, right? It has these big uh, openings in the front, these pockets, they're not really supposed to be vents, but they are mesh lined. They go to the inside of the jacket, and when it's really hot, I open those up and I get some extra airflow into my chest. There are vents on each side of the arm here, and then underneath the armpit right in here, there's a huge vent on the side, again, that lets air in. Of course, there's an exit vent in the back. So how does a jacket like this do in the heat? Well, to be honest with you, it's a little warmer than wearing a full mesh jacket. I mean, obviously, you're just going to get air coming in, right, all over the place with a full mesh jacket, right? With this one, it doesn't quite have as much airflow, right? But it does pretty well. You open everything up, and especially if you're on something like the Adventure Touring Bike, the Tenere that I have, right, you're standing up pretty good, and you really can get some airflow going across the chest, right, and through the pit vents and so forth. On the vision here, well, then I've got that big fairing around there so I don't quite get the same kind of airflow uh, that I get on the tenor. I've ridden this jacket well up into the 90s without any problem and a couple of times with temps over 100. However, you know, if you're stopped at a light or something like that, it, it gets hot. I will admit that. But again, use your base layers, keep yourself hydrated, and then you'll be okay. All right, before I'm done with this jacket, I know there's some of you who have been paying close attention here and you noticed that I said that I was able to get rid of all the rain gear and all of the liners by going with this jacket. However, in the previous video we were talking about mid-layers and the mid-layers that I was going to be bringing along to Alaska and I was going to be bringing two of them so they, you know, pretty good size, about the same size as a set of rain gear. However, most times I don't carry two mid layers. Most of the time I only carry one, and it's about that size. So my rain gear and my other liners are this, right, which is the one mid layer is that. So saving myself a substantial amount of space by using this kind of jacket. Now, if you're looking for something less expensive, what we did for my wife, because she just didn't want to spend the money, she's much more frugal than I am, we went with this Climb Blaze jacket that, again, is full Gore-Tex, has the D3O armor in the shoulders, in the back, in the uh, elbows, so she's all protected, and she is going to stay dry as well. Uh, but we were able to pick this one up as a closeout for, I think, just under $200. So they are out there. The deals are out there. Again, if you're looking for closeouts, you can find your size. So check that Climb out. Climb is, of course, not the only manufacturer out there that carries this kind of jacket, right? There's Ruka, who is another manufacturer known to produce really high quality jackets. They have a complete line of these 100% waterproof jackets. Uh, there is also Aero stitch that makes full body suits that a lot of people actually swear by. And if you're looking for something a little bit less expensive, some of my friends have gone with the uh, First Gear Kilimanjaro jacket, which again has a 100% rainproof lining. It's not Gore-Tex, it's their own proprietary brand, but uh, this seems to be doing very well. Those guys love it. And I think they run about 399 bucks for that jacket. So take a look around. Doesn't really matter the brand that you buy. Uh, again, for me, this really is important that it be 100% waterproof and I don't have to carry that rain gear and throw that on on the side of the road and all of the stuff that goes along with it. Again, for me, made a big, big difference. Before I go, let me reiterate one thing that I said in the first video in this series. And that is, to the new riders out there, the new touring guys, make your choices in riding clothing based upon function, not upon style. Right? It really doesn't matter whether your jacket or your helmet matches your bike. Right? It really doesn't matter whether the right name, right logo is on your jacket. What matters is that the jacket is doing the job that it's supposed to do. Right, you're going to run into problems out there on the road, right? You're going to run into rain, you're going to run into hail, you're going to run into all kinds of stuff out there that you need to be protected so from. Really, make sure that you're protected when you go out there. Not only from the road, again, but from the elements. 
And that's the words of wisdom, I guess, that I hope that uh, you get out of all of this. As I'm making this video, it is Memorial Day weekend, so I want to make sure that I say thank you to all those members of the armed services who have made the ultimate sacrifice to keep us safe and to keep us free. Also, I want to say thank you to all of their families as well. This Memorial Day would be a great time to make a donation to a fantastic organization called Homes for Our Troops that we happen to be supporting for this Alaska trip. And you can do that by going to my website, www.livingoffthe-slab.com, right there on the top. And the home page, there's a button that says donate. If you click that, you can go and just make a donation. Anything that you can afford five ten bucks that's all we ask help us out help a great cause so as I'm making this video we are closing in on 9,000 subscribers again I am extremely humbled thank you for watching and thank you for continuing to buy from Twisted Throttle by linking to my website again just helps me keep these videos coming all right also I'll get back to you on that discount I'm not sure what happened there but we'll figure it out so Hopefully that won't stop you from buying. Uh, so thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.